So um, we will have exam uh, next Wednesday. So rather than Monday, I'll make it Wednesday because we need to cover or clarify a few few more uh, some more material. So anyway, it will be next Wednesday, not Monday. Uh, is the date November fourth? Right? Is that right? All right. So. <clears throat> Uh, so last time I introduced you the concept of interfaces and the idea was uh, define an interface before we uh, create the class, right? Uh, and the benefit is, uh, see, especially in a, a team environment, uh, if you already created an interface, uh, so I, let's say, compute or whatever, right? And you defined a few methods, for example, let's say double compute area or whatever, right? Um, and uh, double radius, for example. Okay, uh, so remember in an interface, we simply uh, write the name of the method, what input it takes, uh, what's the return type. No public or private over here. Okay, and same way we can have more. And now once we create, let's say, a class, suppose we call it my compute. Now we will say we'll implement the I compute interface, and then we will write the real code for whatever the methods are defined in the interface. Okay, so the benefit of this is, um, number one, uh, for example, let's say the class has, uh, you know, two, three hundred lines of code. So if it's a few hundred lines of code, uh, see somebody uh, in your project uh, who's coordinating with you may want to call this method, right? Because their goal is whatever useful thing you have written, how can they call this method? Okay, so if rather than looking into the code and seeing, oh, uh, what parameters do I pass, what type of result it will give us, okay, uh, interface is hardly few lines of code. So somebody can take a look at the interface and say, oh, this is how I call it, right? And the other benefit is tomorrow, let's say, uh, whatever code you have written, you decide to change it, okay? But um, if the interface stays fixed, then the calling code does not have to change. Calling code will still go by the name of the method, what parameter, what return type. So typically, before we start writing a, a full detailed code, we decide on a good interface. And once we have decided on a good interface, we don't change it. And again, interaction between different classes in our projects becomes a lot cleaner this way. Okay. okay, so as far as interfaces are concerned, there are two types of interfaces. Okay, one are called uh, custom, meaning we define the interface. Okay, and one are called standard interfaces. So standard is basically defined by the .NET library. <coughs> so the name of the method, what input it takes, what output it gives us, is already uh, fixed by the .NET library. Our job as a programmer is to implement the interface and provide the real code, right? So there are a few, uh, uh, for example, popular interfaces that in my opinion, every programmer should feel comfortable using them, <coughs> excuse me, implementing them. So some of the popular interfaces are iClonable, iComparable, iComparer, okay, iEquality Comparer, Okay, and uh, as time permits, we can take a look at some other interfaces as well. 
but at least uh, first three of these, uh, everybody should feel very, very comfortable. Uh, how do we program them? How do we use them? Okay. What's the purpose of uh, these uh, interfaces? Purpose of iClonable is to make in memory copy of an object. Okay. See, for example, in C Sharp, exactly like Java, okay, suppose you created a class, let's say student S1 equal to new student. And let's say you put some data over here through the constructor, right? Whatever, first name, whatever, right? Uh, suppose this is Bill and so on. Okay, uh, now you try to create a second student. S2 equal to S1, okay? Um, so is, S, uh, is S2 a completely separate student? Uh, is, does S2 have the same data as S1 and does it have its separate memory? Okay, the answer is no, okay? Uh, anytime we assign one reference type to another, it points to the same memory, okay? To show you, let's take a look at the first line, student <coughs> S1. What will it do? It will go to the stack area, create a reference called S1, right? Now let's go to the new student. So now we will go to the heap area and create memory for whatever first name, whatever, whatever are the private fields, right? Last name and ID and test one and test two. Right? And all of these, since we said student S1 equal to new student, will be pointing over here. Okay? So now, once we trigger the constructor, it will end up storing bill and whatever, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, let's say 85, let's say 91. Okay? So suppose those are the things we were passing in the constructor. Right? Now focus on the second line. Student S2 equal to S1. So just what will the left side do? S2. It will create a reference called S2, S2 right? And now we said it, uh, S2 is pointing same place as S1 is pointing. So it, all it does, it points to the same memory. So S2, S1 are really the same, same. object. They are not two different objects, right? Uh, so for example, after we assign S2 to S1, if you did, uh, let's say, message box dot show, Uh, let's say s1 dot test1 uh, dot two string. What will you see in this example? 85. Uh, you'll see 85, right? Okay. Uh, what if I say s2 dot same, same thing, right? Uh, so now before I uh, display the message box, what if I do s1 dot test 1 equal to 50. 50. It will be 50. So now, uh, remember, it's the same memory. So if I change S1, uh, right, if I change S1, and then I try to check S2, it's the exact same memory. So, uh, so we need a mechanism uh, so that we are not pointing to the same memory, in, but in fact these are two different objects uh, with their own memory so that if we change one, it doesn't affect the other one, right? So this is where iClonable comes into play. Okay, it has one method called clone, okay, uh, that, you that we will write code for. And once we write proper code for it, uh, we'll be able to copy objects such that each object has its own memory. So that's the purpose of this, right? Uh, next one. Uh, sometimes we create a list of, like an array list, or as I will introduce to you soon, uh, generic lists or strongly typed lists. So if we have an array or a list of data, if we wanted to sort them, okay? So suppose you created an array list, let's pretend, and you put in, in it a student S1, student S2, student S, and so on, many students you stored in it, right? Remember by calling the add method, you can put as many things in the array list as an example. 
So suppose the array list is called S list. Okay, uh, so now the array list already gives us a sort method. So it already has a quick sort implementation. So if we call the sort, it will rearrange this, all the students that we have, but in which order? Okay, will it order them by first name? Will it order them by last name or ID or test one and test two? Uh, see, we never indicated anything over here. So if you simply write this code, you will get an error message. And it will say, I don't know how to sort, because you never specified a field. Okay, so one of the purposes of iComparable is to provide comparison. On a field. On a particular field. <coughs> so that for example, we can do the sorting. Or uh, so that we can do, for example, if S1 is less than S2. Okay, you'll be able to do those kind of, kinds of things if um, uh, you overload the less than operator and then further provide a proper comparison over here. Okay? So anyway, uh, so that's the purpose of the iComparable. Very briefly, iComparer is like a more flexible form of com uh, comparison. Okay, so more flexible comparison so that uh, between two objects. Okay, so that if we are trying to sort dynamically, we can change the field. Uh, so sometimes we can pick first name to sort on, sometimes ID sometimes last name. Uh, so, so this is a little more advanced, uh, but anyway, uh, let me show you the uh, one by one, the typical code for this. Uh, and then in your next assignment, you will use the, these capabilities. So let's start with the cloning first. Okay, so typically what we do is we say class student, and once again assume we have those five fields over here. And if we want cloning capabilities over here, we will say colon i clonable. Right? Okay, and uh, once you right click on it and say, uh, what was that, quick actions or whatever, mm -hmm. one of the quick action actions will be implement interface. Uh, so once we, you choose implement interface towards the end of your code, it will end up writing a simple